Ah. <laughs> okay, I got me. I got me on there. It was acting kind of funny, but I am on. Good morning. Good morning and good morning. Glad to see you come on in this space with me. I tell you, it's been a it's been an interesting couple of days. Interesting, interesting, but um I'm excited about today, you know, and I see the comments. Yes, thank you so much, Lavender. I tell you, you know, I've, I've struggled. I've struggled with making sure that I got this platform, which is Facebook and Streamline and YouTube all working. And YouTube just shows up as being public. Facebook doesn't. So uh, I thank Lavender so much again for helping me feel like I'm, I'm on the right place. Good morning, Joan. Oh, I'm happy. I'm happy. I'm happy. John and I, we kind of had a little session earlier this morning and uh, just to make sure that she could get on. And so we're so happy to see her. Hoping Debbie's been asking about you. So I'm hoping Debbie's going to get on too. And we talk a little bit about this holiday coming up for some, for others, it's just another day. Um, but we're going to just talk about the table. You know, I've done this before. I did it uh, two years ago. And the table has just always been an interesting place to me because even whenever I go to a meeting or I go to a dinner or I go to some conferences, I want to know who is at the table. And the question is, did I invite them? Would I invite them or did they just show up? We just never, never know. Um, what will go on at the table after people assemble and they assemble for one reason, one reason, one reason or another. And so it's just an interesting, interesting time for me to just realize that that when we have folks that come to our tables or the tables that we're mm -hmm. at, we want to know how does that work? You know, um, are they are they here for coming to solutions or deciding that the meal is delicious or do they have complaints or whatever is going on. And every once in a while, you may go to an event and you find that people come with their own agenda, regardless of the set agenda, they have their own. And it might be tied up in so many different things. It might be tied up in how they, you know, perceive that everyone should greet them or or if they want to even give in information starting with their name and so many things. And sometimes we go to those those events and we have to start off maybe with the name tag. Um, but when people come to your table, say it's your personal table. It's interesting. So I'm going to start off with the poem. And I like this poem. This is probably one of my favorite, favorite poems because it has a little sense of humor to it. And so I really love it. It's called The Table and the Chair. Now, you know, that just sounds like right there. It's by Edward Lear. It says, said the table to the chair. Uh, you can hardly be aware how I suffer from the heat. And from children and, and from ch children's on my feet. If we took a little walk, we might have a little talk. Pray, let us take the air, said the table to the chair. Said the table to said the chair to the table. Uh, now you know we are not able. How foolishly you talk. When you know we cannot walk, said the table with a sigh. It can do no harm to try. I've as many as legs as you. Why can't we walk on two? So they both went slowly down and walked about the town with a cheerful and bumpy sound. As they toddled around and around and everybody cried as they hastened to the side. See the table on the chair. Have you come out? Come out and take the air. So listen, I don't know if you can get your table and chair to walk. I don't think so. I know my mother used to hate it when you, she would always say, don't lean back in her chair. Don't cream back in her chair. She said, because it was messing up the legs. <laughs> and you know, when you think about it, after a while, there's so much that on four it could do. But if you find a chair that really is already song, shown most of its resilience in the past, you don't want to trust how well it would do right now with you sitting in it. 
you know, sometimes I look at chairs and I said, now nah, I don't sit there, but then it's the table. We were at a table yesterday, my daughter and I, and the table was, you know, rocking back and forth. Well, we wanted another table. Did we get another table? We did. We did. So sometimes you have to ask to be moved, but can you ask to be moved from the people that you're with? <laughs> sometimes they assign you to people automatically. You are just with those people. Debbie, hey, good morning, Debbie. Debbie, Joan is back. She, 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 she knows that you were looking for her, so she is back today. So anyway, we really want to say good morning to you all. Thank you so much for joining me. Um, I'm so excited about this new platform that gives me the, the opportunity to have both, you know, uh, the, the, st the stream yard as well as the uh, Facebook. And then I also have YouTube, which is another way of getting it over there. Before it used to take so long for everything to come. And, I, and after, I, I think I have 140-something uh, videos on YouTube, but it was too hard to put them on. It would take me another two hours after I finished presenting to send them over to YouTube. This is a better platform. It makes it all work together. So let's talk about the table. But first, I'm going to ask you, are you stuck? <laughs> Every once in a while, you might be stuck with who you eat with, who you sit with who you have to have a conversation with, who you may want to avoid in the future. <laughs> we know it. We know it. We know it. So, and it all surrounds us sitting at a table. So what is a table? A table is an article of furniture consisting of a flat slab-like top supported on one or more legs or other supports. It could be a kitchen table, an operating table, a pool table. Okay. It could be a coffee table. It could be a, the tall cocktail tables. Tables, okay, flat, flat top sitting on at least one leg. You know, and at first when I was doing this, I said one leg, one leg. And then I had to remember cocktail tables, the, those tall ones, they're a lot of times they're made with a solid, solid base that comes down from the middle, which would balance anything that sits flat on the top. So anyway, it also says it's a piece of furniture with a flat top and four legs moving, providing a level of surface of which objects may be placed. And it says they can be used for such purposes as eating, writing, working, or playing games, all of which I love to do. Eating, writing, working, and playing games. How about you? So anyway, you know, a, a table, which we may not think of it, is also like a bench. Like a bench, they said, is a table. And like when you're working in the garages, I remember when we bought the, the house that we're in, it had this long, it still does, this long, huge bench table. And you could put a saw on the end of it, or you could put, you know, some kind of attachments for various smaller um, appliances or, or tools that were out in the garage. They have counter tables. Like when you go and you buy something at a store, they're always going to pay, you're going to pay for something, but it's going to be over, over the, uh, the counter, which is a table. Good morning. Good morning, Erica. How are you? Welcome. Welcome. I'm, in. I'm so excited. It says, then there's a board table, a desk. I mean, we sit at desks all day long. Some of us sit at, some of them sit at tables, some sit at a desk. A desk is just another form of a table as a flat surface and it has the, the legs that support it in a way that makes it work for you. And then they have the buffet table. How many of us have gone to buffets? You know, I, re I recently went to a buffet and wasn't that excited about it. My daughter and I went and, you know, I found the food too salty and too sugary or whatever, even in things I didn't expect to have sugar in them, they did. So sometimes you have to realize what's being served <laughs> at the table, all right? And so, you know, the last uh, thing I have on here is there's a work table and a stand, an actual stand that you can go to and purchase something from. So when we break this word down of the are you stuck process, it really talks about tasks. When you generally are sitting at a table, you have a task to do. It may be to listen to a lecturer or a presentation. It may be that you're going to eat or you're going to you know, write your best memoir. 
you're going to do something at that table. And it says it is a task that you're carrying on. It says it's a piece of work to be done or undertaken. And usually some people may be able to write on in their bed, but you, if I go sit and write in my, in my bed, I'm probably asleep, you know, before I can get out five little letters down on a piece of paper. So that's not the best place for me. I generally am at a table or a desk if I'm going to write something. But uh, uh, this task thing talks about sometimes that's how we treat our jobs or our chores, the duties we have. Sometimes we labor at our desk or not you know, we don't have to be out in garages or, you know, walking or doing things that require us to be away from the desk that we work on. But even when we come back, we're probably going to assemble something or write something from that desk. It says that we might be doing this task as a piece of work that ultimately may, you know, earn us a lot of money or get us in a position that we that we understand that something the task we did earned us something that we did at that table okay good morning claudine how are you oh good morning angela oh my goodness i'm so excited i i y'all can't get over this for me because i'm i am i'm just excited about this is working and oh my goodness so anyway the tasks that we do generally we do a lot of things at a table technique is great we form our technique. We form our, our, you know, our temper sometimes begin at the table. We can be sitting. We hear something that makes us mad. What happens? What happens? We want to argue. We want to fuss and fight. We may not go physical, but we, but we get irritated enough that it raises us up at the table. I mean, you know, I just remember Nikita Khrushchev taking off his shoe at the Conge uh, Geneva Convention wanted to bam it, he bammed it on the, you know, I, those are things that are memorable about things that happen at tables. Tempers fly, and it could be over the tasks or the assignment that you've been given. So it says that, that, that tasks talk about assignments. Sometimes it's a commission that's been given that you must make sense of. And sometimes you don't even understand from the language that was written initially that you're supposed to you know, move out on, you don't even get that. So that may take a long time just to realize mm, this isn't going to work. It's not working well. Okay. Then it says the task is going to give you an undertaking and a venture. But sometimes, as I said, the people at the table may cause tempers to fly. <laughs> what Debbie said, it says tempers test LOL. That's right. The temper test. <laughs> and sometimes you will find that there is a temper test. There is a temper test. Um, when we move further on in our word, thank you for those. We move further along in our word. When I come to the A of table, I come to attitude. Now, how many know <laughs> if you serve the wrong thing or you tell people, well, you know, I, you know, today we're having like, say you don't eat pork. Well, you know, you ask, <laughs> you may ask somebody, well, what were the greens cooked in? Oh, we cooked them in hog malls. Well, I don't eat that, you know. <laughs> may have a little temper. <laughs> they might have wanted some of those greens, but because they don't eat the pork, they're mad. Okay. So sometimes you have to maybe even go out there and, and query a little bit of the people that you've invited to your table. You know, I'm going to ask y'all a question in between the other questions and y'all can put it in when you get ready. Are you having company over this sun Sunday and are you inviting people to your table? And if you are, if you are inviting people to your table, who are they? Are they family? Are they friends? Are they, you know, you know, friends of friends? All that kind of stuff. All that kind of stuff. Um, okay. And Debbie says, let's see, agenda. That's good for, for, I said attitude. She said agenda. Appetite. Okay, come on now. Because, <laughs> you know, when you go to eat, you want to get something to eat, you know? Uh, accommodate because sometimes we do have to accommodate our guests. Like if I know that there's some things that you don't like, I'm not going to serve them, or they will be labeled or instructed that 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 you know these things have such and such in them, like no sugar or butter or whatever, whatever that 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 the you know your your guests need to know. They need to know that. And it says absolutely not. <laughs> I know, Lavender. <laughs> Absolutely not. That's good. That's good. So when we have this attitude, we may take action. And the action may 
may form us to be a little uh nasty <laughs> and it says it says it's a way that we settle of thinking or feeling about someone or something that's when we have an attitude okay it says typically one is is one that is reflected in a person's behavior you know they may want to get up from the table they may say well i'm going to leave and go someplace else to eat i'm going to do whatever whatever they okay because they were offended there's another a offended would be oh excuse me there's there's another word offended you know um so anyway we really talk about one's point of view you know when you have an attitude you had a point of view you know you've decided what you want and what you don't know um no soul food sunday this weekend <laughs> okay no soul food sunday yeah i um i want to um and i'm going to tell you i got pork uh i won a certificate for uh honey baked ham so i am going to get a small one of those and i ordered a, a um a dessert to take to someone else's house but i'm not entertaining at my house i am not so it says um when we have this attitude we may have a our own perspective our own point of view it may be a vantage point from up for our our understanding not anyone else's they may still be ticked off by this it may be the way of thinking sometimes people just think funny they just think it's all about them even though they've been, been invited amongst you know eight other people they may say well instead of saying I, I i don't want that they just think that they were somehow left left out and that's not true it's that sometimes you have to feed to the masses and then the other people you say well you know sorry you don't eat that but this was what was on the menu sometimes we have to do that and it says uh it's a way of looking at things and it, it might be when people have an attitude it might be the school of thought how they just came from the understanding that when you invite people to your house or you go to certain places everything is the same for everyone and they still because they're not everyone they may not fit in that picture it may not fit their paradigm and they're letting you know that um it's an outlook and angle it might be a slant towards the way things are addressed it might be one's opinion you know and we all have an opinion you know whether we like or don't like stuff and as i told you before i absolutely hate the inside of the bread <laughs> so i'm a person i don't know how i grew up like that but even when i was little i would only eat the crust so my mother would literally make a small sandwich cut out the inside the bread give that to somebody else and i would eat the outside with just i only like the hardness of the bread i don't like it if it's too soft so i know i'm crazy so when i go out with people they just tell me cut all that out and put that we'll eat that because that's the part we eat fine with me so obviously it's an, it, when we have this thing um that we really want to to address it talks about our attitude it's our ideas but it's also our way of thinking we just think that way or we feel like way for me with with that bread thing it's a texture thing i just do not like it. i don't like it when i move on through my table um my b for in my table is business when you are dealing in in you know it could be something that's financial it could be something that's a an obligation contractually it could be you know working out the plans for a new you know assignment a new assessment or whatever that requires planning um that's business and so business generally is conducted around a table um and you're signing documents or you're signing your life away everybody reels that does that beautify okay i like that i like that when when we really think about you know the way in which we deal with with our our tables we want it to be you know a beautiful occasion i do even if i go to a conference i'm looking for the fun table i don't want to go to the table where everybody is down everybody is having some issues with whatever's not right the food's right not right the decor is not right the people i'm sitting with aren't right you know i've been with those and it's draining it's like you can't really enjoy your meal you're afraid to really say too much because you don't know what offends them because so far everything has 
<laughs> but anyway, a business obviously talks about when a person or re- has a regular occupation or trade and they're working at it through transactions and looking at, at you know, the first line of work. How do we get through this? How do we make this something that we all agree on and we all feel has addressed the issues at large if it's planning something major or even minor things? Because sometimes you have to do the minor things before you ever get around to anything that's major. Next, we talk about the career itself. We talk about, you know, the fact that when we're dealing in business, it might be that somebody is going to be interviewed and where are they interviewed? At a table. You know, they're not interviewing people standing up. Now, they may, after the interview, they may walk them around the building or introduce them to certain people, or maybe there's a panel of people that you're sitting at behind the table. And that's the way, you know, a lot of businesses are doing now where they, you know, there's like layers of people who may interview you all the way up, especially if it's a, a business that's dealing in, in either technology, high tech, you know, artificial intelligence, anything that is not only committed, committing, but also maybe ones that you're working from your homes. And so you realize that they're looking for integrity and positivity and, and you know, um, the idea that they can believe that what you say you're going to do, you will complete. And, you know, meeting deadlines and understanding the significance of, of having um, no visible leadership, but still being led um, and, and understand that commitment. Balance is really good. Balance and, and uh, to, to beautify, those are good words that you would use around your table. Uh, you might be talking about a balanced meal. You know, when I was coming up, you know, my mother always had, you know, a, the a protein, a starch, and a vegetable every single day. We never went without it. And when we got a fun day, like with a hot dog or something, we didn't know what to do. But my mother was was basically home most of my life growing up. So we love that, that that's how we were, we were treated. So balance is really good. Um, nowadays, you know, the balance may be, you know, chicken nuggets and um, fries. I didn't think that's all balance to me, you know. Um, in fact, I had some fries the other day and they were horrible. They were horrible. They, I guess I've just lost my flair and my taste buds for that kind of stuff. But um, anyway, so when we have the whole thing of business, we really talk about, you know, um, it's it's how one pursues or, or, or carries out their craft and making sure things are done. And generally, they're going to be done at a table. OK, uh, here's what this one kind of intrigued me because I, I went directly towards the how the table is made. I went for the legs. I feel when you have this thing called the table, the table would not be a table. It would just be a slab if you did not have the legs. So I feel that's the same thing when you're talking about business or doing a lot of other things. You need to have, you know, some action being put to it. And a lot of times action can't happen until you put something that's movable to it. You know, either it's it's going to be driven by finance or driven by, you know, you're sitting down and realizing how much it's going to cost and where it's going to be, you know, grown or, or matured or all those kinds of things. So you have to do it. So it, the legs are important. So it's just each, each of these legs supports the tables, the chairs, or other pieces of furniture that use legs. And it says it's going to be upright because why it needs to be, it needs to be vertical to hold uh, securely what it's supposed to support, including us. Because sometimes when we sit down in a chair, we need the chair to support us. Then it also talks about it being a brace, it being a prop, an underpinning pinning. That means it's there for us. We go to sit in it. It's not going to move back and it's not going to collapse to the floor. Um, and then last, it is the column because it is straight up. It's the column that stands for us. Did anybody have <laughs> laughter? That's good. Laughter is good because I love laughter at my table. I do. You know, I can eat and laugh. You know, no problem. No problem whatsoever. Um, and the last letter that I have, any more L's? Joan, you usually like to chime in. You have any L's? The last letter I have for my table 
what do I do at my table? I eat. I eat. I want my food. And so when we when we've prepared the food, we've cooked it, we've baked it, we've we've done everything that we need, we air fried it, <laughs> we microwaved it. Where is it served? Generally, it's going to be served from the table. Okay, we're going to be seated at the table and everyone partaking in whatever it is. So we eat with our eyes. We, we, we put the food in our mouths and we chew and we swallow it all done at the table. Now, I know for a fact that, that my, my, my mom would not in any way let us talk while we were um, eating food because she didn't want to see it. She, I won't see that. Uh-uh. I'm teaching you for when you go out later on. You need to know how it is you eat. And so you eat with your mouth closed after it's in there. Then you close your mouth and you don't talk. And we don't want you spitting on anything, spitting anything out. So we we learned that early on. So um, let's see what did somebody put. Exceptional. OK, I like exceptional. Exceptional is a great word. You know, that means it's it it it's above. It's above what? whatever was expected. That's why I love to, to realize the importance of, of having something that is exceptional. It may be a, an exceptional style or exceptional food that we've had or it, so many things that exceptional works for, at least for me. And so when I have this thing that, I, that I'm calling about eating, I'm, reading, I'm going to consume the food at the table. Now, I, don't, I think it wasn't until we might have been teenagers, you know, and late teenagers, like in our 16 and 17, before my mother ever let us eat, um, you know, anywhere other than, than at the kitchen table or the dining room table. And then even at dining room time, I mean, at, at special times, even the dining room wasn't available. It was a table, a card table that they would set up just for the kids. But my mother and them always ate at the at the main dining table and dining room table and the food and everything that was served was all served there and everyone ate there, you know, so they ate their meals there. So when we eat, obviously we devour, we ingest, we partake of, it says we may gobble down, we may gobble down what we're supposed to have, gulp it, <laughs> that obviously if you're drinking and you're too loud, you know, you're probably gonna hear from somebody. So, Man, now you're making all that noise. We may wolf it down. Like I had a, a friend that always, if we started, you know, at nine o'clock to eat by 9.05, she was done. Done eating. I said, girl, that was good. I'm going to go get some more. <laughs> wait, wait a minute. <laughs> How you know you can even handle it? So sometimes we have to let it get on down there a little minute before we realize that we're full. But, but to eat... Um, it may be something that you love to do at your table. How many of you still eat at your table every day? I eat, I will eat dinner here, but generally I'm running around in the morning and I'll just get up, grab a coffee. And sometimes I may not even have, you know, anything to eat until long after this is finished. So it might be 11 o'clock or 12 o'clock before I get anything in. Um, and then... I'm probably going to be eating it on the go, eating it on the go. Um, for some of you who don't know, you know, the fact that I've been walking for <laughs> hitchhiking um, for months now, I, I am in the process now of getting a new car, <laughs> a new car to me. I don't know if I want a brand new car because they, they've really gone up exponentially to the point where you say, what, you know, um, and that's even for the cars that weren't that expensive before. So the pandemic really played havoc on absolutely everything. Oh, okay, you do. Oh, ease. Okay, Debbie, ease. And Gloria said we do. So so you all still eat at your at your dinner table. That's wonderful. You know, or even your breakfast table. I like I kind of I come and sit down. I'll sit down now. Now, the one bad thing that I do during that time is I turn on my TV because generally I'm not going to sit down until it's time for the news. I try to prepare my meal just in time so that I can watch the news and then I go on about my business. But yeah, and get my dishes washed before I head on out. But generally I do eat at my table. My, In fact, if you 
I hope you don't see them behind me, but I have all of my appliances over there on my counter. I'm going to clean that out one of these days. <laughs> I am. It's just my, I got an air fryer that I love and a, a, I think it's a Keurig uh, pot and my mixer. Those three things just by themselves take up space, but I'm, I'm going to do some remodeling and come back with something that works. It says we eat, we eat together at night in the kitchen bar or the table. Okay, so you're still there together, which is good. It says, um, I've eaten at Gloria's table and yours. Yes, you have. Yes, you have. I I, I found some recipes I want to try. And um, they're healthy recipes. And so I said, I'm going to, to, to just invite a few folks to the table. That's going to be my gift of, of the love and kindness you show me for just coming into this space with me. I'm always excited about the fact that, that you know, this, this, idea has grown to be very popular and and placed in a position that says God gave me something to do you know in my years beyond working for the fed folks that I'm actually still working still doing something that's needed I feel that if you can always get down to the the possibility of asking yourself are you stuck you understand the significance of changing what you've heard in the past for yourselves or creating a new for your future. That's what I want with Are You Stuck? is just taking words, making them where they are more friendly, more understood, more believable for you. And it's not my words. It's what you feel about the word that we discuss every day. And it just gives you great, great pause to just say, you know what, who am I having Sunday for dinner? And you know everybody has a cousin, as they, as the uh, the uh, kings of comedy used to say. Everybody has somebody to come over. No, actually, it was Eddie Murphy. It says their uncle. You know, the uncle would come over and burn up everything in the house, <laughs> and then said, "Now that's a fire." So, so I always look at the fact that our tables sometimes have people that are are tough to get along with, but there's still a table. It's still an opportunity to say that we can branch the the, the gap of, of just liking to, um, you know, send out some SOS. You know, I love you too, that kind of thing. And so I want you all to have a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful weekend. If you celebrate Easter, do so. If you go to church, be blessed. Be blessed even if you don't go to church, but but just understand that that uh, the table may give you an opportunity to um, talk a little bit, to you know have a little attitude, not much, to love greatly, um, to really get into the point of just entertaining and eating, and um, most of all, just continuing to join together as friends family, or just associates if it's in a business of some sort or conference. You all have a great weekend. Be safe out there. And listen, if you don't do anything else, sit down at the table. Enjoy yourself, even if it's by yourself. Okay? Love you. I will see you on Monday. Thank you for joining today. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And ask yourself, are you stuck? Ask some folks that that may let you know. Have a good day. Thanks. Bye-bye.